Uh, Lennox Gastaut is a very, it's an epileptic encephalopathy, very, very difficult to control um, a condition that's characterized by an abnormal pattern on the EEG with a slow spike and slow wave pattern of one and a half to two hertz, um, multiple different seizure types. But the one important seizure type that you need for the diagnosis are the presence of tonic seizures. And finally, uh, cognitive regression. So those are the three core criteria for Lennox Gastaut syndrome. But all in all, it's an epileptic encephalopathy that's intractable and difficult to control. Fulfilling criteria for Lennox Gastaut syndrome uh, is Lennox Gastaut syndrome is frequently used as a population of patients. Um, for the newer anti-epileptic drugs to, uh, to test their effectiveness. And the reason is because if we had a single drug that was effective for Lennox Gastaut, we wouldn't be able to do any of these studies. Um, so the, we are always looking for different options and effective medications in the treatment of Lennox Gastaut syndrome. So Dravet syndrome, again, is a, a, another uh, difficult to control epilepti um, epileptic encephalopathy that is characterized by initially uh, normal kids uh, who start having uh, febrile seizures, often prolonged febrile seizures in the first year of life, and then they evolve into having afebrile seizures or seizures without fever, often hemiclonic seizures. Um, and at that point, they also start having uh, cognitive regression, ataxia, and about three quarters of them um, are found to have a mutation in the SCN1A gene. This is an interesting um, uh, medication because it actually was discovered um, uh, observationally to be effective in patients with Dravet syndrome a number of years ago. And more recently, there have been controlled studies demonstrating uh, its effectiveness in this population. Actually, com and, and now randomized controlled studies comparing it to placebo um, with a, a very gratifying benefit using the 0.8 milligram uh, dose as compared to placebo. I think 63% uh, 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 greater effectiveness in the 0.8 milligram dose as compared to placebo. So it works. Um, the other interesting thing that they did in the study um, is we tend to, as physicians, we want numbers. We want to know that there's a, a median percentage reduction in seizures or a responder rate that gives us an idea of how well the medication works. But what they also did in the study is look at uh, clinical global improvement. And I would say ask caregivers or parents to, to give us an impression as to whether they thought the drug really worked, how effective the drug was. And they used the scale to look at it. Um, and it's interesting that the parent's perception of improvement was present once there was more than, I think, a 44% reduction in, in seizures. So obviously, in, in this study, the drug had a 63% reduction as compared to placebo. So it was way above that. And in that group of patients, there was a significant or really meaningful improvement in quality of life. So it's really a balance between parents' perception or quality of life and the numbers that we're looking at. And the study did look at both and did dem demonstrate that there was a gratifying improvement uh, with this medication, especially at that 0.8 milligram dose. The syndrome is interesting because it's, it's mostly related to this gene mutation. And I think one of the important things that we learned when the syndrome, when the gene mutation was first discovered, was not what drugs to use, but specifically what drugs not to use. And medications like some of the sodium channel medications, uh, Lamotrigine, these were drugs that made the patients much worse. And there was a significant improvement in how these patients did once we stopped using those drugs. So that was the first breakthrough with the discovery of this gene mutation. Subsequent to that, we've looked at other kinds of therapies, uh, such as fenfluramine in the study, um, the ketogenic diet, uh, that have really improved these patients' lives and, um, and morbidity.